right guys we're out here in the garden um, you can see behind me we this is our main garden we're growing uh, mostly on drip irrigation and what we like to use we grow everything on the uh, woven ground cover the DeWitt 3.2 ounce and uh, we're going to be extending the drip irrigation down so what we're going to be basically using is got this half inch main line tube to run your main line down and all the fittings that go with that you got your quarter inch tubing for your drip emitters uh, you want a filter so you're filtering out any sediment won't clog your emitters up you need a pressure regulator uh, take your pressure down 25 or 30, what I've got here is a 30 PSI pressure reducer. Uh, I guess you can use a knife or whatever you got to cut, but these cutters right here, probably the easiest thing to use to cut your tubing. And your drip emitters. And I think these are, these might be one gallon per hour. They're either half a gallon or one gallon per hour, I have to look. But either way, um, when you're doing this, you're putting a separate emitter on each plant, and we use these on our peppers and tomatoes. And I've tried the, the uh, our garden is kind of on a slope, so I've tried using the uh, drip tape on this, which is good if you're not using the ground cover and you can bury the tape or if you got an area that's flat it would probably be okay but I like to put a separate emitter and what I do is fix my tube with the barb fitting the emitter on the end and you got your stake to hold it it just snaps in here like this and goes in the ground and you know exactly what each plants getting when you run you know if you run it for an hour uh, you're getting a gallon of, of, or half a gallon or a gallon of water on each plant and it, putting it in slow it's got time for the ground to absorb the water you don't have any runoff or waste which works out good and you're not wetting your foliage so you can basically water any time of day um, probably nice to have they make different tools I prefer this one tubing goes in there you punch your hole and you just snap your tube in put your emitter in the ground and I'm gonna run a I've got a line run all the way down we extended our garden down to the bottom this year so I need to run a separate line uh, I think I'm gonna run a completely new line from the top all the way down for that that way I can do the top garden and the bottom garden separate because uh, we're probably going to extend that out next year and I don't know I guess depending on how much water flow you've got um, as to how how many emitters you can put on a line as long as you've got the flow and when you buy these emitters always make sure you get the pressure compensating drip emitters which means that if you uh, your first emitter and the last one on the whole system are all going to be getting the same exact amount of water. So I've got my blueberries over here. I run these on them and uh, it seems to work out good for us. Uh, everything we got, we get at the Drip Depot. It's a good place to buy all your drip irrigation supplies. I think they got free shipping, uh, anything over $49, and they get it out to you quick, so they've got everything you need, and I've dealt with them for a few years now, so they are uh, real good to work with, so anyway, I'm going to get uh, everything together and get started, and I'll go ahead and make up a bunch of these tubes, I usually make them, I don't know, a foot or so long. 12 to 15 inches long so you got plenty of uh, space you can loop these around any kind of way it doesn't matter it gives you a little extra to work with and uh, get all the fittings together and we'll get this 
irrigation put in. It's real quick and easy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and run my line all the way down past the new rows of tomatoes we did and go ahead and run it down to the okra so I can run lines on them later today. I'm just gonna do the tomatoes. So I need 36 uh, these irrigation drip emitters to do what I need to do today. Uh, I'm going ahead and cutting all my quarter inch tube pieces. So I just take a piece that I use for a, a reference length. And just cut one you think's about right. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's about 15 inch piece. I just use that for my piece to measure by and just go ahead and cut all my pieces. And get all them cut ahead of time and go ahead and get your assemblies put together. So like I said I need 36 of these or 38 and uh, go ahead and get that done and get them assembled. The reason they use this black tubing, I think, is because it doesn't let any algae growth get inside that tube. Um, I don't know if it's impregnated with something, but I think just being black, it keeps the algae growth out of it. And like I said, I turned mine on for the first time, cleaned my filter, went down there and turned everything on. Uh, you know, if you get one it's a little clogged up. All you got to do is just loosen it up till you get some spray coming out. And you got a little diaphragm piece inside here that uh, I guess that's what adjusts your flow rate. But if you just loosen that up till you get a good spray coming out and let it spray out, it'll flush anything out. Normally they don't get clogged up, so. You don't really have a problem with that. Um, and get you one of these little torches. They're good for burning holes in your woven fabric. And also, if you just heat this up a hair, it makes your fittings go in a whole lot easier. Just heat it up a little. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these tubes cut. And then I'll put my barb fittings and my emitters on them and they'll be ready to go. All right, so you got all your pieces cut the length that you want. And you run your main line going down uh, the side of your garden. Then you're gonna tee off of this, which I'll show you when we get down in the garden. But you're gonna tee off of this and run your main line for each row. And uh, then basically what you do, you got this tool that punches the main tubing. You got that in there, punches, puts a hole in the tube. You got your quarter inch tube with the emitter on one end, the barb on the other. It just pops in there like that. You uh, got your tube. Put it on your stake. Plants right there. You just put that in the ground and you're dripping out. And I looked it up, the black, these are the Antelco emitters. Uh, the black ones are four liters per hour, which is just barely over one gallon per hour emitters on these. You can clean these out. These are the Netafim woodpecker drip emitters, they're both pressure compensating. This one, uh, you can't get inside of it, but it's supposed to be self-cleaning so it won't clog, and even, even these, they very rarely clog up, so. But uh, say you got your tube and you put a, put a hole in the wrong place, maybe you get it on the wrong side of the tube, or you've got a plant, you decide you don't need an emitter on it anymore, got your tube, your hole, you just 
Well, like this, you just pop that out. Make sure you get some of these goof plugs. They're the quarter inch barbed goof plugs. You got a hole in here. You made a mistake or you don't need an emitter there anymore. You just pop one of these goof plugs in and plug that hole up and you're done. So you don't have to worry about that. And I looked this tube up. This is the half inch polyethylene uh, Grip Depot, a 500 foot roll. I think runs about $60. You get a thousand foot roll for right at a hundred. A quarter inch tube uh, runs about $25 for a 500 foot roll. These emitters are a little over 30 cent a piece. Either one you get the uh, I like the one gallon per hour, so. And I've got a, which I'll show you in another video, I'm gonna go over some stuff on that. I've got a IBC tote tank up here that I mix my fertilizer mix in, and I plug it right into my drip system and uh, mix it diluted. I've got it on solar power, and I've got a tote right there with the battery and the 12 volt pump. So I just mix my fertilizer, ready to go. Bring my uh, tube out, hook it right into my drip system. And whenever I want to fertilize, I just go ahead and run it out of the tank. I don't have any electricity right down here in the field, so I just run that off of the solar power. And uh, I'll go over that whole system. I said last week, I think from Monday to Friday, we had about six inches of rain. And we hadn't had any this week. It's been dry as a bone, so everything needed watering. So I went ahead and turned turned on my irrigation. That's the first time I've used it this year. We've been flooded down. Down here, we're in the Piedmont section of North Carolina, so um, made sure all my emitters, I think I had two out of probably 150 that were clogged up. So I've got drip on everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and run Another line, I'm going to put the uh, filter, the pressure regulator, run my main line and then tee off of that, run my lines going down to the rows and put my emitters on each one and I'll show you all that when I, as I'm doing it. Um, another thing, if you're running your fertilizer through and you're running off the house or any kind of chemical, it might be a good idea to put a backflow preventer to keep anything from backflowing into you. Now on a hose, I'm not sure if you don't have it right at the house, how big of an issue it's gonna be having anything. But I've got that hooked straight. It's not got anything tied to the house, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you're running something tied to the house and you're running any kind of chemical or fertilizer through it, you don't want that backflowing into your system coming out into your kitchen sink or into your house so um, I'm gonna get everything together get my main line run down here all right so we're gonna start off with a uh, female garden hose adapter and it's got like a push lock fitting on this end now you can use any kind of you can buy a hose repair kit with a female adapter on it whatever you want to use with a clamp these are like a push lock type deal. Let's go ahead and start off with this. Got our main line tube, run all the way down the length of the garden. This will be our header tube. And this just pushes on here and locks in. Then you've got your pressure regulator. It's uh, This one's a 30 PSI. So that's just gonna thread right into here into your female hose. Then you've got your filter screen and you can buy these replacement screens. These are cheap. These are cheap. That's probably not gonna break. This eventually might get clogged up or it's a real fine screen. It keeps any kind of debris from getting into your system. That just slides in anytime you want you to take that out and clean it. That goes in there. Threads right into here into your pressure regulator and you set you can put a quick connect if you want to just have it where you can put a quick connect on your hose i like to use those a lot and 
go ahead and set this where you want it. I use these, I usually order the good heavy duty uh, landscape fabric stakes. And you go ahead and just stake, I stake that down where you want it. And you're ready to go. So, you just run this all the way down the length of the garden. And then we're going to tie in. We've already ran the hose. The hard part is probably getting this stuff to run off the roll. I got to figure a better way to do it, but we'll go ahead and do that. We'll cut our tees in and run down and we'll start putting our emitters in. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this straight just every little bit. You can use the ones you get at the big box store, but they're really not quite as heavy duty as these. I like these better, but either one will work. But you just pull this down every so often, just stake it to the ground, and we'll do that, and then we'll come cut our tees in. I'm gonna go ahead and run these all the way down the length of the garden down to the bottom. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, I got my half inch tee. I'm going to go ahead and cut a T in here. So I want to come right behind my plants. Just go ahead and cut my line. And slide my T in. On the other side. Mark it in. And it's my main line header tube, and then this is my main line for the row. I'll go ahead and connect connect this line up here. I've got that. I'll stake this down here on the end. And I got a couple of these made up. I need uh, I need 18 of these for this row, so I think I've got four. But show you how to do that. It's got a barbed end on the fit on the uh, emitter. They go in pretty easy. So you just slide that in until it stops. And. Uh, You got your double bar fitting quarter inch that goes into the line. I like to get it started. Now, like I said, if you heat, if your line's warm, it's not as hard to get in there. I've got a hole in my cutters, which that fits in there, and that's going to help me push that all the way up till it seats. And so we've got that. That's one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these made up. I need. 18 for this row and then I'll pull this down straighten it out on the other end I'm going to use one of these plugs pushes in just the same way just barb slides it right in plugs off the end of the line and uh, get this done and get everything straight and we'll go ahead and start putting our tubes in and setting them We'll turn the water and try it out and try it out and see what we've got. All right, we got the line run from the top all the way down. I'm gonna do a second row here, but I've just got the first row done. But I came down here and teed off and ran down this line. I've got an emitter on every plant. So, got down to the end here, and uh, I'll show you. I put a, uh, I put a plug right there on the end of that line, so the water stops. So you can, if you wanted to, you could tie back onto that with a, with a uh, coupling or a T, and. 
I've still got that row to do, but I'm gonna get it done here. Uh, the okra down there is looking good, but I got a hundred okra, so I'm not sure. And it's pretty drought tolerant, so depending on what kind of rain we get, I can bring a barrel down here and water that out of a barrel if I need to. Um, like I said, it's pretty drought tolerant. Stuff grows like a tree, but tomatoes, I like to have a dripper on every tomato plant so I know exactly how much I get. I did all this stuff up here on the garden from here all the way up all these rows uh, I put on the water this morning for I guess it was probably on there two and a half hours three hours so it got a good two to three gallons of water on every plant and I like knowing exactly how much water I'm getting it's going in slow and getting a good deep watering so you don't have water runoff you don't have any waste you're not wetting your foliage and you can get your fertilizer run through the same line if you need to um, go up here I'm gonna go ahead and tie in the hose I made two separate lines because I want to water the bottom down there separate from the top because I don't want to put too many emitters on one line I'll probably end up with a couple hundred so um, depending on how much water you've got available so um, let me go ahead and get the hose hooked up and we'll go down here and see what we got coming out. All right, so I got the water on and you can see, got a good steady drip of water going in nice and slow. on every plant and all the way down through here they're the same nice slow drip of water and uh, Nice, good, controlled irrigation all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and do this second row, but I guess that about wraps it up. So, if you got any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer you, and uh, I'll leave a link to Drip Depot, so where you can get your supplies at. You got everything you need. I promise you. And like I said, it's. Uh, free shipping 49 anything over 49 dollars so a lot of these places kill you on the shipping charges uh, and I got some other good stuff coming up here soon uh, be working on our orchard I'm gonna try to get a lot of these trees straightened out I've got my muscadines up on the hill the rest of this garden there's my other garden there I've got all my blue, the blueberries in here got a hundred blueberry bushes and I'm gonna expand that on out I want to eventually get about 500 so I'll be doing a lot of propagation I've got some good videos on propagation and uh, system I've got for that seems to work pretty good